crazy how this whole thing came about because I called up a buddy of mine, Charles King, at Mac Ventures, and another friend of mine, Serena Williams, over at Serena Ventures, and we put together a million dollars for black entrepreneurs. Right now, the world that we live in, everyone wants to start their own business and create something for themselves. There's a lot more entrepreneurs, but it's really amazing to see people of color and more women coming into the game and getting opportunities. Although there needs to be so much more movement to give folks the kinds of advantages and opportunities that, that others have. Part of the ethos of being in Serena Ventures is to make everyday lives better for everyday people. That's why we love early investing. From my background being from Compton, it's so important and to give an opportunity to people who have just as good ideas. Black ideas, black products, black dreams, it's your chance right now to take it home. Venture capital funding can be life-changing for any entrepreneur, but data shows that in the past six years, the percentage of venture capital funds going to black business founders has never gone beyond 5%, even though about 10% of U.S. companies are black-owned. Today, Rich Kleiman of 35 Ventures will sit with Serena Williams and her partner, Allison Rappaport-Stillman from Serena Ventures, and Mike Palank at Mac Ventures before three founders of black-owned businesses pitch their ideas to the team. This pitch competition, what was it about this part of the weekend that you guys were really excited about? I like to say I have a passion for two things. One is ventures, and I think you can guess the other one. Well, I actually started investing a little over eight years ago now, um, and I just fell in love with early stage. It was just something that was so natural to me. My journey started there, but eventually I learned that um, particular women and people of color didn't get as much funding from VC investors. And so for me, um, that really changed my path. It's so important to have an opportunity to give to HBCUs in particular. Are we missing people that really deserve a chance for their ideas to shine? We believe great founders and great companies can be anywhere from any economic background, any race or gender. Uh, however, access to venture capital or mentorship is, is often scarce. They approached us about starting a pitch competition as sort of a, a side project to the Legacy Classic Basketball Tournament, and we jumped on it. We thought, God, this would be amazing. This would be a great way to meet so many HBCU founders. Being able to activate and to help and roll up your sleeves is crucial in early stage investing. So what was your guys' approach to that? I think people are always surprised that, you know, we have bi-weekly calls with our founders and offering not just our time, but our connections, our learnings from other companies, connecting them with people we think could be helpful. All these different types of things really set us apart because I think a lot of times you hear about a celebrity investor potentially and you think it's like, oh, it's a name and that's yeah. it, but, but we're not that. Like, this is a full-time job yeah. for both of us. We're yeah, working really definitely. hard for our founders. It's interesting. I wanted to stay away from the celebrity, so I just wanted to definitely build something with a, with a great reputation and, um, and a great portfolio. So I'm going to talk to the founders in a little bit. They're all going to be very nervous. How much do you think they need to think about the actual confidence and presentation today. We're not here to trick you, we're here to learn from you. So we're asking yeah. questions because we want those answers. You know, what we look for is what I think Andreessen has called the earned secret. What is it about that person or this team that their prior professional or personal experiences that gave them some unique insight that no one else has. There's a reason why they're sitting out there five years in the future seeing things that you know the rest of us haven't seen yet and they're gonna pull the rest of the world forward. There are tons of great companies happening. We don't have the ability to fund all of them. So how do we find the best of the best? And it's when we see the big picture, we see this is where the industry is going, and the team has the operational where how to do it. They have the connection. And just be confident in what you have. If you believe it's gonna work, then you can win. And we want you to win. While Serena, Allison, and Mike prepare to listen to the three finalist pitches, the company founders prepare for their big moment. The founders were prepared for their final pitches by top advisors from Amazon Black Business Accelerator, Audible, Invesco QQQ, and Public.com. You know, if I were you, I would start my pitch with, uh, this is the problem I'm solving for. Your industry knowledge is certainly your competitive advantage. It, it would help to be super clear about what you're going after now and how you're making progress there. Having an opportunity to support new entrepreneurs, uh, to support uh, the HBCU culture and uh, the new innovators of the future is really what makes us proud about being here. 
The best thing that I can think comes out of this is not only do startups now have access to the capital that they need, but to really help us uncover some of the hidden or not so hidden talent that we could also be tapping into for some of our larger economic and social impact reasons. Especially as a person of color, I, it confirmed a suspicion that I already had and I think as we all know, there's just an immense pool of talent. And what's more is, you know, the folks I spoke with were extremely qualified, but also brought a unique perspective that you don't often see. In addition to the $1 million investment from Mac Ventures and Serena Ventures, the winning founders will also receive a $10,000 stipend from Audible to fund one year in a shared workspace in Newark, New Jersey, if they choose to relocate to Newark. TrackFlow will be the first to pitch their company to Serena and her team. Hey! hey. hey. It's great to finally meet. Nice and to meet you. Yeah. Ah. So what are your names? Hi, my name is Angelia Nike. And I'm Khalid David. Yeah, my co-founder's in the other room, but AJ's a huge tennis fan, so we allowed him to come, so. <laughs> I, I've been playing tennis for many years, so I appreciate yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> so let's dive right in. Uh, I've been on a job site since the age of 12. I uh, was formally trained as a civil engineer. I uh, eventually ended up at Turner Construction, one of the largest commercial builders in the U.S. That's where I met my co-founder, Jake. Fell in love with the combination of construction and technology, and that's where TrackFlow was born. So who here has done a kitchen or bathroom renovation? I'm really big in the construction industry, yeah. so I pretty much have done everything. I'm sure um, project starts at one price, ends mm -hmm. up at another. Normally, significantly more. <laughs> <laughs> so there's always unforeseen changes to mm -hmm. those project costs. And when you're building a skyscraper in midtown Manhattan, you deal with the same challenges, just in tens of millions of dollars. Time is of the essence. The culture on the job site is often get the work done and document it later. So at TrackFlow, we built an online platform that allows contractors to track, input, and manage project costs, saving them time and money. And this year, we landed the Spiral Project, which is in Hudson Yards, which is the third largest project by volume in New York City, and it had 100 new users to our platform which shows that there's a huge appetite for this mm -hmm. type of solution and it can work at scale. We recently became a certified minority business enterprise. So mm -hmm. uh, with your investment, we also plan on using our MBE cert certification and really coming up with a national strategy mm -hmm. so that we can be in many markets simultaneously. So does this help control the prices so you don't have as many change orders? Because it doesn't seem like it would control the change orders. What it does is give you more clarity around what's coming so you can make decisions sooner. Let's say you're doing a home renovation and there's mm. five different subcontractors. The time it takes for your people to understand that this person's over and that person over, aggregate that, get that to you so you can make an informed decision is really the pain we solve. And are you guys going to just stick to commercial or do you have, ever have a plan, long-term plan to go into residential? So we want to be able to offer it to the general market. The demand is much higher in commercial and we feel like if we can capture that, we can create room to offer it to a homeowner. Mm -hmm. And how much money do you guys need to raise to, to get to the next level? Like what are you guys looking for? So I mean, today we're looking for a million dollars. <laughs> but um, a million dollars will allow us to one, be able to demonstrate that this is pretty much pilot and prove out the technology. Right. Mm -hmm. But without no, our... No, because I'm just trying to get to figure out after this million, because it doesn't last that long, mm -hmm. then what's next? We're thinking that if we can demonstrate national strategy and these machine learning tools, that we'll be in a good position to do a larger raise. We have the relationships with the industry. Let's offer these subcontractors short-term factoring. Yeah. Give okay. us the capital to That's do that. That's clear. Yeah. yeah. I believe the ethos of all of this is to support the advancement of black entrepreneurs and black businesses. Mm -hmm. And as an alumni of Historically Black College, we were taught all these things. Regardless of how this plays out, mm -hmm. um, I'm committed to that work. Yeah, I'm really grateful for this opportunity to share this thing. It was wonderful. It really was. Yeah, it, was good it really it was what they answered, they answered tough, poignant questions. Yeah. And I loved it. To be at this level, to be in these meetings, to have these conversations, it's gonna create plenty of opportunity. I think he was extraordinary, you know, this idea of an earned secret. What is it about your professional, personal past led to the reason why you're building this company? He's third generation construction. Yeah. He, he saw the problem firsthand. He saw, yeah. you know, there was a real use case here. I, I definitely liked. They had seen the problem. They built the strategy. So I loved seeing all the steps that they took. 
Dr. Candace Blacknell is next up to present her company, Gabba, to Serena and her partners. Hi. 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 How are you all? Good. How are you? Yeah. I'm great. I'm glad to be here. So, tell us a little about Gabba, a little bit about yourself. Gabba is an AI-powered career discovery and development platform. I started GABA actually while I was in medical school. So I'm a recent graduate of Morehouse School of Medicine and Georgia Tech Scheller College of Business. So, should I? Yeah, yeah. Let's start. Oh, let's okay. Let's dive in. This <coughs> is not the first slide. Let's see. Oh, this is not the correct presentation. Okay. Yeah. Can we? Can we get some tech support in here, please? Dr. Candace's presentation is off to a bumpy start but the IT team works to get her back up to speed. Hi. Sorry about that. We're gonna um, start over. Okay, <laughs> sounds good. GABA is an AI-powered career discovery and development platform. So interestingly enough, GABA is also a chemical in all of our brains right now. It's helping reduce anxiety, probably working harder for me than you all. Mm -hmm. And we've named ourselves this because that's exactly what we do for today's learners. Specifically for the five million students that are aspiring to health careers in the United States. This is a picture of me after my second deployment. Basically, my deployments were what exposed me to medicine, which right. drove me to go into my medical career. So at that time, I had taken, you know, work with career services and I thought I had a plan, but it, it ended up being just being exposed to other people and the day in the life kind of things that ultimately helped me make my career choice. Um, so with GABA, we're making that a in your mobile phone. You can spend time on the equivalent of TikTok, but it's designed for career discovery specifically. Okay. The app launched September 2021, and since then we've accelerated to 6,000 users around the globe. We're currently generating $10,000 in monthly recurring revenue. We've raised $323,000 in capital to get to this point. We've done it all through organic growth for the most part. We leverage influencer marketing, our brand ambassadors, word of mouth, and referral campaigns to help us get to this, this cost per acquisition of $15. This really reminds me of like an old school, like career day in high school, um, but like a new version and like a modern version. Is there a way to like incorporate that with schooling? Schools actually approach us now to use the platform to drive connections for their students. So they use our algorithm to drive connections between their students, and then we provide them with analytics to help track the outcomes of their students. Yes. What age are the students? 13 and above. Mm -hmm. so, so I was gonna say, so you can start GABA earlier, mm -hmm. and just to kind of see where your career path is going, mm -hmm. et cetera. Yep. Okay. And is the idea for you to build a like profile similar to like LinkedIn, yes. but more for the next generation of, of workers? Okay. Exactly, exactly. We use a gamified system of quizzes, and we assess every learner based on their learning style, their leadership, their personality, and eight domains of wellness. We use that information to help deepen the connections we make with our community members. It's kind of like a social media, though, because you said once you fill out the quiz, then you can just kind of keep checking it and just swiping left. Social media meets dating exactly. kind of thing, right? Exactly. Where it's LinkedIn. You can, yeah. You just see people checking it kind of often or how is that what is the data on that on average our users log in once a week once a week okay. with our new interface we hope to see that engagement go way up and so what will you do with an investment we'll need to expand this team and also provide living salaries for the team that got us to this point <laughs> the the money from this competition will go to that it'll go to expanding the team providing salaries and also expanding our digital marketing efforts you really bootstrapped on 323 that's impressive. Yeah. yeah, it's very impressive. This is very interesting. Yes. Yeah, social meets everything. Yeah. <laughs> I say we're building a, a smarter way to social. Yeah. So. Um, yeah, do you have anything you want to add? Do you guys have any other questions? No. Yeah. Very good. It's great. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's kind of an out of body experience right now. I'm thinking right now, I can't wait to take this back to the team, <laughs> but I'm um, feeling very excited. I'm very proud of the work that we've done. It was really gratifying to, to hear some of your questions and realize like, wow, we've really grown and matured in our business from, from the time we started to now. Dr. Candace checks in with the rest of the GABA team while Serena's team go over their thoughts on her pitch. 
I don't know. It, when you think of like a career day, I think of like, I never had a career day. Did you have a career day? We had career day. Oh, I missed career day. I was doing something you, else. You were playing tennis? Um, <laughs> yeah. But I think of it like you go to high school from what I see on TV, mm -hmm. and then, but that only lasts for two days or like, you know, a yeah. couple years of your life. Then you're kind of off of it. So when I think of this platform, is it something that you're on just for a short period of time and then you're off? She said, I think the average person is logging in once a week. Right. That That's, wasn't a great no. stat. And that was my biggest concern was just mm -hmm. yeah, engagement. user engagement. Brandon Stokes is the last founder to present his pitch to Serena and her team. Hello. Hey, 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 what's up, Brandon? Last yeah. but not least. <laughs> All right, we're excited. Let's just jump into it and tell us about Black Steel. Okay, so we're Black Steel. We're taking a better approach to credit cards. We're a cash flow credit card where your income is your credit score. We provide much higher limits with lower risk. We have 30,000 people who have signed up for us, and we're really helping 68 million people tap into this market, helping them grow their credit and giving them a path to building wealth. After college, I graduated, got a great career in banking, but I just had this debt and this way of credit just looming over me. It just like stopped me from accessing a lot of different things. And I just feel like there was a better process and a better way. So one of the issues that I realized that a lot of people have, 68 million people have, if they have great monthly cash flow, and you have no credit, thin credit, or subprime credit, like you can't get credit cards. And credit cards are like the first entrance to people's credit score. So we just felt a better way to do it was to use your income and cash flow. One of the things we're able to do with the cash flow writing is issue five times higher credit limits than like competing cards. The other thing we're able to do a lot better than credit score based products is mitigate risk faster and better. Because we can see your cash flows, we can react positively or negatively to any cash flows, right? So like, you know, you got a better job, you got more money, we can raise your credit limit. So you have dynamic, like mm -hmm. how often are you resetting the... Well, yeah. so because we're looking at a good history, we understand what your typical spending patterns are. Mm -hmm. patterns are. So what we do is we kind of build like a technical bell, bell curve. Mm -hmm. If things fall with outside of a standard deviation, what we're not used to, then we can adjust up or down. Mm -hmm. The way we work is very, very simple. So a person comes to our platform, they connect their bank account, we analyze our cash flow, so we pulled up to 24 months of transactions. Um, we, uh, I developed a, a number of algorithms, and then we quickly give them a credit limit. It takes a couple of minutes, um, and you'll be able to access that credit limit and with, uh, with a virtual card right then and there, um, and you get an actual physical credit card in the mail. Then the big thing is we report to all three major credit bureaus, so everything that you spend with the card is helping increase your credit. That's, that's so it does. When you use this card, you actually are building credit, mm -hmm. even though you don't have to have credit to start it. Exactly, okay. exactly. You can see an improvement about 60 to 160 points in a couple of months. Wow. So this is a little information about the 30,000 people who've signed up thus far. So 45% came through word of mouth. People are telling other people about this product. And then the common misconception about people who have no credit, thin credit, or some part credit is that they're somehow low income. It's not mm -hmm. true. The average income for our uh, people on our waitlist is uh, six to dollars a month. So wow. these are people who, some of them are pharmacists, some of them are lawyers, a lot of them are immigrants, software engineers, things like that, mm -hmm. that just have a problem establishing credit. Are you physically running yet? Do you guys, are you sent out physical cards yet? No, so we're no? not We're not live yet. All we're doing exactly. is underwriting. So we pre-approved them with our so underwriting they, model. And, they, and they've been connected and you've seen it, right? Mm -hmm. okay. so, so we can see. 30,000 people gave you their. their so we have, we don't have all 30,000 people's okay. bank account number. We yeah. have a select few people that we've, when we pre-approved them, we see what they self-reported. Then we say, hey, we want to learn more. So our our push segment is kind of the people that we tend to market to, where our branding and our external messaging is towards. Right. So, solopreneurs, entrepreneurs, and creatives. The reason being is that when we talk to them, uh, they tend to have higher account balances. So like Black still lives in the gap between having great cash flow and a high bank balance and bad credit and low credit scores or thin credit scores. Well, these a lot of these entrepreneurs and creators are younger and they have, haven't had time to actually exactly. build their credit. Exactly. So it makes sense to push to them. I like the idea. Thank you. I think it's pretty interesting. A, a friend of mine doesn't have credit, and she makes a great, great deal of money, but she never built her credit, and mm -hmm. I just thought it's so interesting. Having no credit or thin credit is just as bad as having bad credit, even though you haven't done anything wrong. Yeah. It's like, mm -hmm. nah. Yeah. You know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, all right. Great. Thank you so much. Yeah. No problem. Thank you, guys. I'm really excited and happy that you guys did something like this as an HBC graduate. Getting like the opportunity for this is humongous. Um, and this is actually a real check size. It's not a prize, it's not a giveaway, it's an investment, mm -hmm. you know, which means we're on the hook to help you out. All right, Brandon. Well, thank you guys Thanks, Brandon. so much. To get through the process and the journey here, it's been awesome, it's been amazing. I'm doing things with technology now that I can do that like wasn't possible a couple decades before, and it's possible now. Things like this make it possible now. 
I like the founder. I like the idea. I'm nervous of credit cards. There's, this is a this is a crowded space. I feel. Yeah, yeah. It's, you know, it's, it is a problem, right? But there's just a lot of companies. No one's Everyone's broken solving that. that problem. Yeah. The presentations are over. The founders way to Serena and her team come to a final decision. So, what do you guys think? I mean, great founders. Really good. This, yeah. is, this is the worst part about the job is you have to pick one. When you guys see companies, all of you, like at this stage, that may not necessarily be like a core business of yours, mm -hmm. does it matter much what the actual business is for you or are you really looking at model and founder? It doesn't really matter. Industry is just, it's more or less about for me the idea. Does it work? Can it fit? Does Is the founder passionate about it? Can we just dive deep and talk about the companies and what Let's we go. like? You're ready, you're chomping at the bit. Yeah, so we start out with track flow. Um, I would love to hear your thoughts and even, I don't know about I loved their background. I thought it was like perfect for the industries. I wasn't 100% clear mm -hmm. on mm -hmm. the value to the end user. So for us, we're always thinking like, how do we make everyday lives better for everyday people? Exactly. And I understood that it was better for like the construction manager yeah. to see it, but to the end, person financing the project or what it was, that was a, yeah. a question I was still left with. This is with. very niche. This is for like the construction yeah, business exactly. and contracting business. Yeah, That's I mean, to track flow, so. I guess they're going after yeah, contractors. The, you know, at Mac, we, we like these, like we call them dusty industries, but if you're doing anything by pen and paper, you're ripe for disruption. Yeah. And if these change orders are being done by pen and paper, I like that he's got this mm -hmm. Trojan horse tool Right. on the front lines yeah. and he's using that to get into the bigger business which is like let's onboard the whole project financing onto our platform. And then GABA, uh, anything stick out on GABA? So I think there's a hole in the market for a new place to, for job discovery yeah. but this isn't exactly that either. It's like just helping you figure out what you want to be not finding the job. So I'm, I'm trying to figure out if this is really solving the problem. I wondered, how, where did you see these founders in terms of their development, in terms of use of proceeds, being able to put their work right away? I think they all... They all were ready I, to put their money, the, the had, money to use straight Gabba away. had a slide, like, it's gonna cost me this much for the engineers. I mean, yeah. yeah. I think Black Steel, which was the last one, um, they spent the most time getting ready to go to market. So the other two kind of feel like they launched and have been learning. And so mm. I would say maybe he feels a little bit more prepared, but he's also the one who hasn't launched. Yeah, speaking of Black Steel, um, yeah. so I like the idea, it's just like with GABA, it's two things that I get nervous about sometimes, social yeah. and credit. The, the I, credit I space agree. is overflowed, yeah. Yeah. and then social, it just is also overflowing, and yeah. you know, it, either you hit it or you don't. So what are we thinking? What are you guys leaning towards? I would like to hear your thoughts. First. I have to go first? Yeah. <laughs> I, I think my choice would be would be track flow. I love his founder market fit. I love that, you know, he's in the second biggest project here in New York. Awesome. Yeah, I mean I, I think for me it came down to track flow and black steel. I think GABA just I couldn't see the product fixing the problem that was now I'm thinking about that problem and how I want to solve that problem and I unfortunately didn't feel like that was the right fit. So I think track flow, I think my issues I still remain is like what problem are we really solving here? And maybe it is just a Trojan horse to get to the bigger problem and actually take all the financing and make that cleaner, make that faster. Black Steel, pretty crowded space and I've seen a lot in that. So I think if I had to make a bet, I'd, I'd be more interested in, and, and want to try harder with Trackflow because I think this is unique and, and they have the ability to win in that space. Well, how, about, how about we do Trackflow and we continue to work? I'll, I'll commit to continue to work with both of these companies. Yeah to help them out with investor intros, with just help with scaling, strategy. I'm, I'm down to do that, because I, I like yeah. all three. I, I, I think, I, I see in my mind how I could really plug in TrackFlow yeah. and help them scale, like right away. Yeah, I have some really good intros for TrackFlow. Like I said, I, from the beginning, I can totally get behind that. It's different, we don't have anything like it. Mm -hmm. I'm excited. All right, all right guys, we have our sounds way. like you got your decision. We do. Okay. okay. I'm not settling. I'm not. And you know, win, lose, or draw. We're gonna we're gonna keep doing this work. And I can't unsee that. I can't tell you what I've been through with the men in this room. I can't tell you the sacrifices that we've made. I can't tell you what it's like when your team is looking to you to close the deal. That level of accountability, the way it cemented us. Oh my mean? goodness, here comes Hello, the team. Hello, Trash Flow team. I'm nervous. I'm nervous too. <laughs>
<laughs> well, we loved you all, obviously, and so you're back, but we have some bad news. But it's good news, too. We started understanding kind of the bigger picture, and honestly, it was a hard decision, but ultimately, um, we picked you. We picked you. <laughs> 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 Yeah. I don't even know what to do with myself. <laughs> We're gonna hit the ground running in 2022. Yeah. yeah. We'll, yes. we'll get this investment done, and then, yes. yeah, we'll figure and out then, the plan. Yeah. I'm, I'm lost for words. I don't even know what to say. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We are going to work tirelessly yeah. to, to prove to ourselves, prove to our customers, prove to you that you made the right choice.